Hey everyone, it's Nicole again. Sorry it's been so long since I've posted a video, but a lot has happened in the past few months. Just in a nutshell, I had surgery, had complications, started nursing, sorry, started nursing school. Um, what else did I do? My brother left for the Marine Corps, my parents moved into a new house, and I moved back home. So we're currently in the new house. I'm recording this video in my brother's room actually because mine's pretty messy. Um, just finished my semester of nursing school today and I have surgery scheduled for tomorrow. So I am gonna quickly try to go over and cover the things that have happened in the past few months, but feel free to ask me questions if I miss anything. Okay, so the last video I posted was about the surgery I had, the Nissen fun application in July of this past year. And the surgery itself went really well. There was no there were no complications or issues at the time, but after surgery, I pretty much knew something was wrong. Uh, the pain was under control and that was fine, but immediately when I started eating, I knew there was a problem. Swallowing things was super painful and it just felt like it was getting stuck. Like, I didn't know if my esophagus was just super swollen from surgery and it would just pass, um, but it didn't. And the surgeon originally told me, oh, it'll just pass, like it's just swelling, it's not a big deal. They did like a barium swallow and it was horribly uncomfortable, but they're like, oh, it's just swollen from surgery because it was like two days after. They sent me home. I honestly don't even remember the whole timeline. It was just a miserable, miserable time. It was at a new hospital for me. Um, I went to Northwestern this time. Most of my surgeries are done at a different Chicago hospital and I've had better experiences there, but Northwestern had this good surgeon to do upper GI surgery. So I figured, you know, I'll try it out. Uh, well, I was also given a recommendation from my um, GI doctor at my other hospital to go to Northwestern because they specialized in upper GI esophageal stuff. So I had the surgery for GERD um, with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, the connective tissue disorder. I have the lower esophageal sphincter um, right above your stomach didn't stay closed. So um, I was on acid reflux medication for like proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers for 10 years before I had the surgery done. It was supposed to be simple. Afterwards, I felt better than I was expecting to feel, honestly. But I ended up staying in the hospital for four days <clears throat> and just never really improved. They tell you after that kind of surgery, the worst thing to do is to throw up um, because that whole movement in this general area can tear the stitches and where the surgery was just done. So when I was in the hospital, I was super nauseous, but I never, I don't think I ever actually threw up. But then I went home, um, they say to like stick to a soft diet. So my dad made me crepes or Eierkuchen in German. So it was soft. Well, um, it was probably three days after being home and I ate that and it just got stuck and it was horribly, horribly painful. And I say it got stuck, it got stuck like right about here. I can't say it's like a choking feeling because it's not like you're choking, it's sort of like you're suffocating and I don't know, it just feels like something is stuck and painfully, like painfully stuck. So for anyone who's experienced that, you know exactly what I mean. It, I hope I'm explaining it if you haven't. I ended up throwing up about like six times after that. So called my um, surgeon's office and I don't know if it was a resident or whoever told me to just come to the ER because I shouldn't be throwing up that much afterwards and maybe something is wrong. They thought that the surgery, I don't know exactly what they thought. It like flipped and inverted the surgical site. They said, come in, we'll do some scans and see what's going on. So came in and basically I'll try to summarize now because I'm like going off on a tangent, but basically stayed in the hospital that time. My surgeon was in Korea, um, came back. And I think, so I had my first dilation when I was there. They're like, oh, okay, well maybe it's just swelling and edema and sexual fluid built up there. So we'll dilate your esophagus and it'll squeeze the um, fluid out. And hopefully that'll help. So they did that once. I was on like a liquid diet afterwards and then, and then I just really wanted to go home. I was sick and tired. I had a horrible experience that time when I was in the hospital and just wanted to go home. Um, so I did did not improve at all. Like that night I felt okay. I was able to eat like ice cream and I was like, yes. But then it just got worse all over again. So over like from July, August, 
July and August were just horrible months. I stuck to liquid diet strictly, um, mashed potatoes, and even that would get stuck sometimes. Liquid, like, like thin liquids, like water and juices and stuff would get stuck, and then I would, would choke on that stuff, and it was just horrible. Like, I wouldn't wish it upon anyone, and I regretted the surgery completely because it just did not work. Well, I started nursing school the last week in August I think it, yeah it was the last week in August so a little less than a month out of surgery and it was supposed to be no big deal but I was miserable I knew something was wrong but my surgeon like wasn't convinced at the time so like the first week of school I want to say second week of school he had me um go get another barium swallow and I also swallowed like a barium tablet it was probably like this big it was it's it was a decent size. I drank half the barium, which by the way is absolutely disgusting. And it just, I threw it up immediately, um, at least half of it. Some of it trickled down. And then when I swallowed the tablet, it got stuck. So um, I knew immediately, I could see from the, the images that there was problems, I could tell by the way. I felt that there was problems, but I think my surgeon, I don't know if he was doubting me or if he just needed evidence, I don't know. Um, he's told me that it never has happened to anyone before where he's made the Nissen too tight. And I asked him that before surgery and I said, like, would it be too tight? Should you just do it halfway? And I think it's called like a toupee fun application. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it's called. Um, instead of the full 360 degree Nissen fun application. And he said, no, that should be fine. If you do the partial wrap, then you probably won't get any acid reflux relief. And we use a bougie, I think it's called. And they, um, it's like um, a dilator and they put it in your esophagus and wrap your stomach around that way so it stays open a certain amount um, and doesn't close up completely. So they were convinced that it was gonna be fine, but it wasn't. Um, after he got the images from that, he called me and I remember getting the call. I was at school. Um, I So the way my schedule worked out was Mondays I had class 9 a.m. to 6 p.m awful, absolutely awful days. I went from the lab at the hospital back to um, my college and then stayed in the same nursing building all day long, like with virtually no breaks. Like there were a little bit of, there's a little bit of time like, oh, here, grab them and eat and then hurry back. That's it. So it was a very long day of sitting and just, if you have problems eating, I couldn't eat in class or anything. So, cause I would throw up. So I would starve myself all day and it was horrible. That was the only way I could make it through school. So that was Mondays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays were clinical days. Um, that was difficult also when I'm like a patient myself and struggling myself. But I just gotta pretend like everything's good and keep on going. Thursdays I had lab. Fridays I had class. And then I work also. So I got a new job in July and I work now at a new hospital. Um, the hospital where I had all my like good experience surgeries where they, they went really well. Um, it's a level one trauma center. It's a great hospital and a big system here in Chicago. So I'm really excited about that, but I work night shift. So I work 20 hours a night shift a week on top of school five days a week in clinicals. So I was very busy and overwhelmed. I remember being in the nursing building, um, like downstairs in the basement with the lounges and a few of my professors are in their offices, but I don't think any other students are really there. And I was studying because I have a hard time studying at home. And I got a call from my uh, surgeon. He had previously told me that he was gonna consult with other um, upper GI surgeons, esophageal surgeons, and see what the best plan of action is. Cause I had already had multiple um, dilations and they didn't think it was gonna work. It just was making it bleed. It wasn't actually dilating and staying dilated. I got the call when I was down there and uh, I stepped outside, talked to him and was just devastated basically by what I heard. He basically told me that the surgery he did was too tight, which is what I knew from the very beginning, but something that he wouldn't admit. He referred to a esophageal manometry test that I had done. So this was done at a different hospital where I was originally gonna have the surgery done before they told me they were uncomfortable doing it. That hospital did not give me the actual file to give to Northwestern, the surgeon there. And uh, so he went based off the, the report and said, before I go forward with the surgery, I'll make sure my nurse gets the, the file so we know what we're doing the right thing. But it says um, 
I think they called it ineffective motility disorder or something like that, that I had in my esophagus and just some swallowing issues, which I never knew I had. I mean, now I could tell I do, but, um, <clears throat> it was my normal, so I didn't know anything different. Um, and I didn't really question it too much. Well, I guess this is the part where you should be your own advocate because I never asked again if he got the actual file and he didn't. Um, he just went off the report. So he told me over the phone that they finally got the file. This is in August. Um, and I had surgery July 18th. And he said if he would have known um, what the file showed, he probably wouldn't have done a full wrap. The report didn't document how severe the swallowing problem was. So making it as tight as he did um, just caused dysphagia. And that was devastating to hear. He also said the only thing to solve this problem after he discussed it with his colleagues was repeat surgery to revise the um, site that he already operated on. So he said that means I would have to have surgery to completely take down this, the, um, the wrap that I currently have and redo it like halfway, what he should have initially done. So a bit frustrating. I kind of lost all my trust in him. Um, I was two weeks into nursing school and didn't know what I would do. I was overwhelmed and way over my head with work, a uh, brand new job, trying to balance night shift with school. And it was my, it is, well, it was my first semester of nursing school and they just changed the program and condensed it. So there was a lot, a lot to do. Yeah, so I ended up coming back in the building in tears. I just couldn't control myself. Like, I I don't think I've been more devastated. Like, I've had the ostomy and stuff, and that's been... I've had my trials and tribulations with that, but it's just... Nursing is what I want to do with my life, and I finally got to nursing school, which took me a very, very long time, and uh, a lot of effort and hard work, so I didn't want to jeopardize my education at the time. So I was just in tears and my two professors came walking by and they saw I was in tears and they were absolutely amazing. Like I could cry right now <laughs> talking about it, but they came and uh, sat with me and talked me through the whole thing and perks of having a nursing career, nursing professors, they understand, they get it. So at the time they said, you know, you know, we'll, we'll let you miss like two weeks of school. I go to a small school, so it's easier. I don't want to say it's easier to miss class, but um, it's easier to work with the teachers if you miss something versus like a large university where um, you're like one in 400 in a lecture or something. At that point, I said, you know, I'm afraid to have surgery right now because if I do and there's still complications or if something happens and it goes longer than two weeks that I need to recover because I needed to have um, no lifting restrictions afterwards too because of clinicals. So if it ended up taking longer than I thought the initial like two weeks I'd be given, then I would have to take off a full year of school and restart the program the following, the following fall, so a full year later. So I wasn't about to do that. I tried to figure out something that would work instead and um, tried to sh troubleshoot with my professors. Initially, for any of you that are curious, at least where I go to school, you can't have a pick line and be in clinicals because I guess the higher chance of infection or pulling, I honestly don't remember what they told me, but you just can't have a pick line. But you could have a central line. Oh, that's what it is. You can't have like an open catheter or needle or whatever that's on the outside of your body. So I could have a port if the port was not accessed during clinicals. So that was an option that we were considering for like TPN because I couldn't eat at all or nearly at all. Um, and making it through school and having brain power for anything is just really difficult. So we're trying to troubleshoot something to keep me in nursing school, get through the semester and then have that revision surgery over winter break. And we ended up deciding the pick line was out, the port was an option, but um, I mean, a port is a big deal and it has to be like implanted in your chest and all that stuff. It just wasn't the most ideal. It just didn't seem like the best option. So I was thinking about it more and more and like my surgeon didn't have any ideas for me. So thank God I'm a nursing student and have good resources and can think medical ways myself because I was like, well, what about a G tube? Like I've had, I've known people who have uh, feeding tubes. So why don't I just get one of those? I looked into it. First, I was like super scared of having a tube like that in my stomach and 
It might sound weird because I haven't asked me, but it just was different to me. But I ended up talking to my surgeon about that and between the port and the feeding tube, he thought the, the feeding tube would be the best option because if my GI system still functions and works past my esophagus, then might as well use it, uh, which is true. Like doctors do encourage using your GI system if it does function because you don't want to lose that function. Um, and bypass it. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so I understood that. We ended up scheduling to put in a PEG tube and that was done, I want to say like September 14th or something like that. So two months-ish after I had surgery. So it was the miserable two months. And then in September I had the PEG tube placed. I'll show you pictures of that, of what it looked like right afterwards. 